In alhamdulillah, nahmaduhu wa nasta'inuhu wa nastaghfiruhu wa na'udhu billahi min shururi anfusina wa min sayyati a'malina. May yahdihi la fala mudilla la wa may yudlil fala hadiya la. Wa shadu an la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika la. Wa shadu anna muhammadan abduhu wa rasuluh sallallahu alayhi wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa sallam tasliman kathira. Ya ayuha nas, itaqa rabakum aladhi khalaqakum min nafsin wahida wa ja'ala minha zawjaha wa batha minhuma rijalan kathira wa nisa' wa taqa la aladhi tasaluna bihi wal arham inna laha kana alaykum rakiba Ya ayuha alladhina amanu itaqa la wa qulu qawlan sadida yuslih lakum a'malakum wa yaqfir lakum dhanubakum may yuti laha wa rasuluhu faqad faza fawzan azima One of the blessings of my job working here at Tatlif is that I get to witness uh, amazing things and amazing people in our community. And oftentimes I'm afforded the chance to see people at their best. Um, and that is a great source of comfort and rejuvenation for me, and it reminds me of a saying of Imam Warithdin Muhammad, which always stuck with me, which is that there will always be good in the Ummah of Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And I saw something like that this week that I wanted to share with everyone else so that perhaps you could join me in being uplifted uh, by that experience. And I won't name who it was just because uh, I, I don't want to put any uh, undue uh, eyes on the sister. But uh, nonetheless, she was talking about her experience after becoming Muslim. And her experience going into Masajid and being corrected by people, sometimes in a very harsh way, regarding her prayer, regarding her dress, uh, just regarding uh, the fact that she looked a little bit out of place in a masjid. And she said that at first this was extremely off-putting for her because she was wondering like, why are Muslims nitpicking me? Why, why are people being harsh with me? Um, can't they tell that I'm new? Uh, but she said that as she thought about it and she reflected on those experiences, that what she came to realize is that Islam is still so important to Muslims that they're willing to nitpick over it, that they are willing to sometimes argue over it, and that they're willing to correct mistakes in things like the salah that they see, because this deen is very important to them. And this was such a beautiful example of adab uh, that it struck with me and it's been sitting with me all week um, to see the charitable interpretation of those experiences that arose for her simply uh, for no other reason that I can imagine except that she has taqwa, uh, except that she has a good opinion of Allah and she has a good opinion of Allah's servants. And so I wanted to talk a little bit about adab, having seen a beautiful example of it this week. Adab is manners. Um, it is our conduct with each other. And it's one of the most beautiful aspects of our religion because it's what takes our religion from something that would be strictly about worship, strictly about correct theology, and transforms it into something that we are constantly implementing in our daily lives. Adab is taking that belief that we have in our heart and expressing it in our actions throughout our days. But it's actually difficult to find a hadith 
that summarizes adab. We have many hadith that talk about examples of good adab, that talk about the rewards of good adab. But when it comes to sort of succinctly stating what adab is and how we might incorporate it into our lives, uh, it's somewhat difficult to find a hadith on that. But there is a saying by Imam Ali radiallahu anhu um, <clears throat> that I love, that has always stuck with me, um, that I think summarizes it fairly well. And the saying is, Kun andalahi khayrunas, wa kun anda nafsi sharunas, wa kun anda nas rajulan minanas. That is, when you are with Allah, be the best of people. And when you are with yourself, or when you are with the soul, or perhaps more specifically, when you are dealing with your lower self, the nafs, be the strictest of people, be the harshest of people, be ruthless even. But when you are with the people, just be one of the people. So I wanna go through the saying a little bit because it's profound and uh, there are layers to it that we can unpack. When we are with Allah, we are called to be the best of people. And this is really the source of all adab. If we can cultivate adab with our creator, we will be able to have adab with his creation. Even if we are rough around the edges, right? Even if our character, our personality uh, is not very refined, there is a sense in which we should be better than we are in our day-to-day -day conduct, in our conduct with Allah. That even if that doesn't feel quite authentic to you, like I'm not really that grateful of a person. I'm not really that shy of a person. I'm not that charitable of a person. Well, good adab with Allah is in a sense, faking it until you make it. Because Allah, whether or not we are grateful people, Allah is deserving of our gratitude. Whether or not we are charitable people, Allah is deserving of our charity in terms of the time that we devote to salah and dua and fasting and these things. That this idea of authenticity, that whatever is on the inside, we ought to automatically show on the outside. Um, and that this is seen as a virtue in our social interactions. This is not so with Allah, that we ought to be better than we actually are when it comes to our interactions with Allah. And that if we can do this, that what we will in fact be doing is we will be cultivating adab. This is the practicing grounds of adab. Because if we cannot have adab with our Lord, the one who is the source of all the mercy and all the blessings in our life, then we certainly will not be able to have it with anyone else in this world. So we cultivate adab with Allah. And we do this by fulfilling the rights of his lordship. You know, we call upon him by his names that he has informed us of. We beg his forgiveness. And we do it even if we don't feel particularly sorry for our sins. That is one of the most difficult things about Toba, is that we don't always feel like, you know, I'm really sorry for this and I really don't want to do it anymore. Well, even if that's how you feel, you express adab with Allah by asking for his forgiveness anyway. Why? Because he is our Lord and there is none who can forgive us except him. So we ask that of him, if for no other reason than to fulfill his rights of lordship. In short, we act like a servant with Allah. We act like a servant. And this is a great and beautiful thing to be the first time that Allah called the Messenger of God, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, his servant, the Messenger of Allah, he wept. 
he cried because he knew that this was a great rank to have, to be Allah's servant. Abdullah, we are called Abd, but we are called by the one whom we serve as well. We are Abdullah. And one of the secrets of servanthood is that, you know, when you think about a king, uh, you want to meet with the king, you better schedule an appointment, you better uh, dress your best, you better groom yourself, uh, and it's a big deal. But the servant of the king can enter and exit his chamber at will. The servant of the king does not need permission to come into his presence. And this is how we are with Allah. We are his servant, and that is an intimate relationship. And servanthood is what we cultivate when we practice adab with Allah. Now, when it comes to ourself, we are to be the strictest of people. And we are to be exacting. Uh, and this, in fact, is good adab with the nafs as well. Because what we are doing is we are trying to save the nafs. We are trying to rule over the nafs, which cannot rule over itself. The nafs will lead itself and the rest of us into destruction. So good adab with a nafs, with our nafs, is to be strict with it, to impose limits upon it. And there are differences of opinion about this amongst you know, the great teachers of our religion, that you know, there is a tradition, a, a Ghazalian tradition, in which uh, the way that spiritual progress is made is you are very strict with your nafs. But there are other traditions that say, no, go easy on your nafs. So what I would say here is that when we do feel that zeal for Allah's religion, direct it towards yourself, right? Don't direct it towards other Muslims. Don't direct it towards other people, right? That the appropriate place to direct that zeal and that exacting nature that we may have. And, and I have felt this, you know, as someone who converted to this religion, uh, there was a time when I, I felt like I had discovered this great gem and I would get very frustrated with other Muslims that did not seem to be giving this religion its due. And even when I tried not to be outwardly judgmental of them, uh, inwardly, I, I had a little bit of arrogance in my heart towards other Muslims because I, I just feel like you guys aren't living up to the standards that Allah and his messenger put down before us. That is the wrong place to direct your zeal and your strictness and your harshness. Look inwards, because there's a lot of work you can do there, no matter who you are. We all have a lot of work to do on our own hearts. And there is always a way for us to rein our nafs in even further. That is good adab with the nafs, and probably not good adab with most other people. Finally, when you are with the people, be one of the people. This is beautiful advice, and it is prophetic advice. Um, the Prophet وسلم, was not strict and exacting with his companions. He was strict and exacting with himself, uh, but he was not with his other companions. And there is a narration uh, about this that I love. It comes from a man named Kharaj ibn Zayd ibn Thabit. Um, and he was the neighbor of the Messenger of Allah, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he said of his character that he was always, he always showed kindness and made us feel at ease. Whatever we discussed, he discussed the same. If we discussed some worldly affairs, he also spoke of it. When we spoke of the hereafter, he too spoke of the hereafter, and he would describe its events in detail. When we spoke of food, the messenger of God also spoke of food, and he would talk about his favorite foods. He would talk about good foods to eat and foods to avoid. But the messenger of God was not uh, 
the stereotype that we sometimes have of quote unquote religious people, that all they talk about is religion, that, you know, it, it's hard to relate to them on a human level because it's like, man, I'm going to get a khutbah if I go over and talk to this guy after Juma. We just had a khutbah. He wants to give me another one, right? That the habit of the messenger of God, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was to be one of the people to go easy on his companions and to join them in their discussions about whatever they may want to talk about, as long as that thing was permissible, right? So to be one of the people, this is how you cultivate adab with your brothers and sisters. You meet them on a human level. You join them where they are. And if there is some desire in your heart to correct them, to increase their taqwa, then you will be far more successful in doing that by cultivating your own heart, by disciplining your own nafs, and by relating to them as just another human being. That will be a beautiful example. And it's the example of our Prophet, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. أقولوا قالي هذا واستغفر الله لي ولكم ولسائر المسلمين فاستغفروه إنه هو الغفور الرحيم الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله. To end, um, you know, and to return to the the example that I mentioned at the beginning, I think what's so beautiful about that example is it actually shows adab on all three of the accounts that I mentioned that you know, this, uh, this statement that the harshness that I experienced from other Muslims correcting me in the masjid actually showed that they cared about God's religion, that, they, that it was dear to them, that it was so important that they wanted to make sure I was getting it right. That this uh, interpretation, which is so charitable and so beautiful, shows adab with Allah. Because it shows that what she is prioritizing and what she is realizing is important to all of them is God's religion. And so that she can accept a little bit of misbehavior on the part of her brother and sisters for God's religion. She's showing adab with Allah. And she's showing adab with Allah by having a good opinion of his servants. She is showing adab with herself because that is not an easy realization to come to. What is easy is to feel hurt and to say, I am injured. I have been wounded. Look at what they have done to me. How dare they alienate me? How dare they make me feel unwelcome in the masjid? She disciplined that voice within herself. And she saw something beautiful because of it. And she became a person from amongst the people of God's servants with this interpretation. She realized, yeah, we all want the same thing. This religion is all is important to all of us. Um, so I can let it slide. It's okay. We're all after the same thing here. It's a beautiful thing. And adab is something that beautifies our relations. And it's one of the things that I absolutely love about this religion and want to uh, encourage myself and all of you uh, to try to cultivate. Uh, it is what takes this religion from the theoretical and the abstract and from the, uh, the, the strictly religious, we might say, things that are strictly about worship. And it, what, it, it turns it into something that is a way of life. And sometimes you hear Muslims say this, Islam is not a religion, it's a way of life, right? Why do they say that? Because it's supposed to inform our actions no matter where we are and what we're doing. And adab is exactly how we do that. Um, you know, I'm from the South. Uh, manners were emphasized to me growing up, if not always implemented, they were certainly emphasized. And one of the things that uh, really struck me about this religion when I came into it is that Muslims have good manners. And I've traveled across the world and lived in Muslim countries across the world. And that has been true everywhere I went. Um, and if we are to establish a community here in America that will last, 
and a community that will be of benefit, not only to us, but to everyone, then adab is how we are going to establish that because it is going to tie our hearts together. And it is going to establish something here that has deep roots and that calls people to God's religion. So I ask Allah to give us good adab. Ya Allah, give us adab with you. Allow us to call upon you by your names and allow us to beg you for your forgiveness and to beg you for your mercy and to fulfill the rights of lordship that you have over us. Ya Allah, bind our hearts together. Make us beautiful with one another. Make us forgiving with one another. And make us, if we are to be harsh, if we are to be strict, if we are to be zealous and exacting to allow us to direct that towards our own soul so that we might draw closer to you. Ameen. Waqeem al-Salah.